I can't let the shooter defeat me. If your techniques are so effective, why aren't all farmers in the region implementing them? I never thought he'd do it, you know. I just thought, well, he's answered my prayers. For almost two years, President Trump has said he's considering sending troops into Venezuela. And today, he said it again in a meeting with the president of Colombia. But about an hour earlier, the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee had this to say. I do worry about the president's saber rattling. His hints that the U.S. military intervention remains an option. I want to make clear to our witnesses and to everyone else watching, U.S. military intervention is not an option. FEMA Administrator Brock Long announced his resignation, ducking out just as House Democrats pledged to investigate his agency's response to Hurricane Maria. And after the Department of Homeland Security's Inspector General found that Long used government cars for personal business, including a Hawaiian vacation. Plainclothes officers from the Philippines National Bureau of Investigation arrested Maria Ressa, the CEO of Rappler. The news site has been openly critical of President Rodrigo Duterte, who's called Rappler fake news, and barred it from covering his events. Ress is being charged with cyber libel for an article published on the site in 2012 that alleged a businessman was under surveillance for drug smuggling and human trafficking. After 15 years and one last failed attempt to make contact, NASA's declaring the end of Opportunity's mission to Mars. The rover, which found evidence that parts of the planet were once covered in water, stopped responding to NASA's communications in June after a global dust storm coated its solar panels. Uh, even though it's a machine uh, and we're saying goodbye, it's still very hard and, and very poignant. It's been a year since a gunman killed 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Since the tragedy, more than 250 school safety measures were introduced during the 2018 state legislative sessions. 34 states tried to address things like lockdown drills and mental health care. 20 of them passed something. In the latest legislative session, there are another 230 measures pending in the states. The job of implementing these reforms falls on local school boards, including the one in Broward County, Florida, home of Parkland. Good morning. This regular school board meeting of the school board of Broward County, Florida is now called to order. The item that we're discussing right now is an agreement between the, the school board of Broward County and the sheriff's office to have real-time access to the cameras at the schools in the event of an emergency. All those in favor of item II1 indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Item II-1 passes unanimously. The board doesn't just have a new focus. It has a new member. Her name is Lori Alhadef. On February 14th, I was right here in this house and I received a text message that shots were fired at Stoneman Douglas High School, kids running and jumping the fence. From that moment onto this, to what happened that day, I did not have any control. I had no control whatsoever. The gunman, a crazy person, just walks right into the school, knocks down the window of my child's door, and starts shooting, shooting her, and killing her. Alyssa's room's down here. Um, you know, we still have her dirty clothes. Like just the other day, I was smelling her dirty laundry just to still have the smell of her. Before 214, I was a mom for three children, but I was also a soccer mom. I would be lining up the soccer uniforms and I'm coordinating their schedules. But now with my life drastically changing, it's complete opposite. So how fast from that moment did you start getting educated about the school board and start realizing this is where I, this is what I have to do. I sat Shiva before Alyssa for a week. And in that time, we had hundreds of people come into this house and pay their condolences. And people would say to me that we need to fix this. And I realized right away that what they were really saying is, I can't do it. You have to do it. I was like, you know what? 
I can do this. I can be a school board member. Broward County school leaders paint a picture of a district transformed since Parkland. Schools have locked down entrances. They've held more than 1,000 active shooter drills and created hard corners, areas that can't be seen from a door window. Lori says her daughter died because there was nowhere to hide in her classroom. Lori and her colleagues have also debated the most talked about aspect of securing schools, arming teachers. After Parkland, the Florida State Legislature passed a law allowing districts to arm them, but the Broward County School Board dismissed the idea. I think it's a terrible idea. I do not think that we should arm our teachers. I think that we should arm law enforcement, the good guy with a gun, someone who is a trained expert in this field, to have a gun to be able to go in and engage a threat. Our teachers are trained in education. They're trained in teaching our children. They are not trained in shooting a gun. This is Heron Heights Elementary School. Uh, my daughter Alyssa went to this school when we first moved here to Florida. As a school board member, this is one of my schools. This is um, an SRO officer. So we have either SRO officers or guardians that protect our schools. And now with SB 7026, it's mandated state law to have a armed guard at every school. What does it mean for the school board to have someone like you on it? If I wasn't there, it would be probably a lot easier for them to forget and move on. But for the next four years, they'll see my face. They'll see my daughter's face and pictures and know that this cannot be forgotten and know that this is a top priority and that there is a sense of urgency to make sure this is not only done, but done correctly. I have a question to Mr. Runcie. What type of comprehensive school safety plan when do you think you could get that to us? I don't want to necessarily commit to a specific date other than tell you that we are working on that as we speak. The personal and the political are fully blended in Lori's life. At the board meeting, members marked Holocaust Memorial Day. But in Broward County, it's hard to remember any tragedy without remembering their own. While the board lit candles, a student read the names of those killed in the shooting. Alyssa Adladev, Martin Dequeu, Scott Beagle, Nicholas Dwarak, Aaron Feiss. It feels like Jamie the path that you've chosen is a path that Hickson. puts you in the way of reliving this horrible moment over and over again. Why did you choose to do that to yourself? I do think it is part of my healing process. You're supposed to talk about it, and I'm living it. Every day, it's talked about. You know, I think that you have to be careful because certain things can trigger you. I have to keep that power and control and not allow people to hijack my feelings. It's not easy. I mean, at the end of the day, I do have my moments where I will become traumatized and break down, but you just have to build yourself up from there. You know, I can't let the shooter defeat me and defeat my mission in moving forward. Two, three, thank you. Acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan met with NATO leaders today. The main topic of conversation, the Trump administration's recent decision to pull out of a 30-year-old missile deal with Russia. The deal, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF, was signed by Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev in the 1980s. We want a peace that fulfills the dream of all peoples to raise their families in freedom and safety. It limited the development of certain conventional and nuclear missiles. And for decades, it worked. So Trump's decision to pull out of the deal may look like a step towards the apocalypse, given the administration's love of ripping up previously agreed to deals. But this situation isn't like canceled trade agreements or the Paris Climate Accords or the Iran deal. Pulling out of this deal might make sense. That's because Russia has been violating the treaty for years, 
by developing weapons like the 9M729 cruise missile, which can reach Central Europe. Jeffrey Edmonds was on the National Security Council under Obama, where he specialized on Russia and military affairs. When we allow a treaty to be violated continually um, without any kind of consequences, it kind of weakens arms control overall. It's as if you and I agreed in the studio that neither one of us was gonna bring in a knife and we signed a piece of paper and we're sitting here in the middle of the interview, I pull out a knife, I don't think you're gonna like hold the piece of paper up and say, well, I feel safer. Is it sort of like a almost ironic twist that this fell into the Trump administration? Because this is something that could have been dealt right. with in the Obama administration, is that right? Right, that's the really unfortunate part of this it, in that our need to get out of the INF is being conflated with the rest of the policies of this administration. So if it makes sense for the US to pull out of this treaty, why are some people worried about the move? Because it's more evidence that John Bolton is getting his way. Bolton is Trump's national security advisor. He's a legendary hawk, a famously loose cannon. He's argued for bombing both Iran and North Korea. He dislikes treaties and international agreements of all kinds. And he's been pushing for the US to get out of the INF since he got to the White House. Looking back after uh, a few years as national security advisor, if you could achieve three things, what would they be? And, and what would you call them? Call, call those a, a, a win, a successful term getting out of the Iran nuclear deal, getting out of the INF tree. <laughs> okay. Number three, to be determined. <laughs> All right. In less than a year at the Trump White House, Bolton's helped pull the US out of the UN Human Rights Commission and threatened sanctions on the International Criminal Court. He also canceled the nuclear deal with Iran and now got us out of the INF. So even if pulling out of the INF was the right call, it raises a bigger question. Will the Trump administration stay in any of its remaining deals with anyone? Rumors began swirling last night that American agitator Lyndon LaRue had passed away at age 96. That it was a rumor was fitting because since the 1960s, LaRue has been a pioneer of the conspiracy theory. LaRouche, whose political following bordered on a cult, ran for president eight times, in between which he served prison time on federal mail fraud charges. His campaigns never had a shot at legitimacy. Mondale is not simply a KGB agent of the ordinary sense, of course. Mondale is jointly owned by the left wing of the Socialist International and the grain cartel interests. But they did cement LaRouche's role as the definition of the lunatic fringe in American politics. Bush, a former member of the Satanic Trilateral Commission, is a known co-conspirator of the homosexual child molester Henry Kissinger. <laughs> it's hard to pin down exactly what LaRouche believed, but it seemed to boil down to the idea of an all-consuming imperialist conspiracy led by the British Crown. According to LaRouche's sprawling theory, the queen is bent on reducing the global population. As part of that dark plot, she orchestrated 9-11 through her Saudi proxies. LaRouche never managed to have an impact on American policy, but his legacy lives on in the generation of semi-messianic conspiracy theorists who seem to have fashioned themselves in his image. Hey, if we could just get the green movement and the unions and the social justice people together, we could control the world. People wonder how someone like Alex Jones can get away with saying that Sandy Hook never happened. They had their kids going in circles in and out of the building as a photo op. But it was LaRouche who proved that if you're emphatic enough, often enough, someone will start to believe you. LaRouche made his 2004 campaign his last, but lately his name has started to filter back into the news. The Steele dossier suggested that the Kremlin invited a LaRouche delegation to Moscow to enlist its help in spreading misinformation in 2016. And LaRouche himself had a friend in Trump world. I am uh, very familiar with the extraordinary and prophetic thinking of Lyndon LaRouche. The LaRouche movement is now railing against impeaching Trump, in part because of a common enemy. Robert Mueller, the man going after the president, is the same Robert Mueller who, as a young federal prosecutor, put Lyndon LaRouche in prison, under orders from the Queen, of course. Senza!
l'olivo, muore la Puglia! Senza l'olivo, muore la Puglia! Thousands of farmers have been protesting in the south of Italy, with more demonstrations planned this week in Rome. Some came in on tractors. One even brought a dead tree. Their green hats and the olive branches they're extending are meant to send a message. They're calling on the government to stop the spread of Silella fastidiosa, an incurable bacteria that's taken hold of olive trees, and pledged their support to scientists searching for a solution. When the outbreak was first discovered in 2013 in Puglia, scientists said the only way to contain it was to destroy all the infected trees and the healthy ones nearby. In Oria, workers are cutting down olive trees, some as old as the Romans. But not everyone agrees with that solution. Quindi eh, c'è una speculazione dietro Axilella. Axilella è solo un pretesto, un cavallo di Troia per eh, cancellare questo paesaggio e eh, fare un'agricoltura industriale. Olive oil is a 2 billion dollar business in Italy and some family farms have been part of it for generations. Which may be why so many farmers have fought the scientific consensus. Doesn't the scientist's opinion have more weight when it comes to this? Noi abbiamo qui alberi che da mille, da duemila anni, anche millenari. I nostri contadini con queste cure ce li hanno consegnati. Allora, chi è più credibile? Chi ci ha donato questo patrimonio? O chi questo patrimonio lo vuole distruggere in pochissimo tempo? Geofreda is pushing natural remedies. He says he used them to bring this grove back to life, which is proof that scientists are lying. Perché questi quando sono arrivato io eh, ancora c'era del verde sopra e quindi li abbiamo potuti curare. Quelli lì ormai erano stati già tagliati e quindi avevano già provocato dei danni e non li abbiamo più potuti salvare. If your techniques are so effective, why aren't all farmers in the region implementing them? Le mie parole e le mie sperimentazioni non vengono diffuse tramite la stampa, tramite i media, perché i media locali stanno facendo veramente un terrorismo politico, stanno facendo nei nostri confronti. Nel loro obiettivo è non curare la pianta, ma sostituire queste piante. There's no evidence that's true. But so many farmers believed the conspiracy that Italian courts put the eradication order on pause. And by then, Silella infected another three million trees. While the scientists who tried to contain the problem, like some members of Pierre Federico Lenotte's team, were investigated for supposed criminal activity. Some of these olive trees are thousands of years old. Can you understand why people are not convinced that a single source of bacteria came over here and wiped out so many trees? Gli olivi si sono coevoluti e sono sopravvissuti migliaia di anni in questo ambiente, ma non potevano sapere che con la globalizzazione sarebbe arrivato un batterio che non avevano mai conosciuto prima. E questi sono gli effetti delle grandissime problematiche del trasferimento di patogeni alieni. Why do you think these theories, which are different to what the scientists are saying, are having so much weight in the local you know, farming communities? Sicuramente ci sono diverse componenti. Una è quella di un, di una, di un clima generale, non solo italiano, ma forse internazionale, di diffidenza nella scienza e nel facile accesso ai media, soprattutto al, al web, eh, che permette a chiunque di, eh, di diventare uno pseudo scienziato. Now local authorities are trying to outrun both the spread of the bacteria and the spread of farmers' theories. Last year, they asked Parliament for permission to destroy trees without an owner's consent. Even if they get their wish, it may be too late. Zizella has been found outside of Puglia. Is there anything that scientists can say to convince you to stop the fight against the eradication of the diseased olive trees? No, assolutamente no. Assolutamente no. Gli scienziati eh, peccano di presunzione. La scienza è dubbio, perché il territorio è nostro e noi lo dobbiamo difendere, questo territorio. Und 
December 17th, residents of Port Talbot woke up to a surprise. Banksy, the anonymous street artist, left his mark on the garage of a local steel worker. Well, I don't really know how it became to come in Port Talbot. Out of all the places around here to pick this spot to do it, eh? yeah. it's pretty amazing. So I was popping down to see my mum anyway, but yes, absolutely, I came earlier than I would have to, to see this. It just appeared one day, apparently. Port Talbot is known for steelworking and some of the worst pollution in the UK. The appearance of a world-renowned artist has attracted thousands of people to the town. But the big question everyone's been asking is how did Banksy end up here? My name's Gary Owen. Um, I sell books on Amazon for a living. Gary Owen has lived here for over 50 years and claims he invited Banksy to the town to make a statement about its environmental issues. I thought I'd got to contact somebody who was world famous. Maybe he'll do a bit of artwork in the Talbot. I put an um, Instagram message up, and that was in August. I asked him to do something along the line of um, seagulls flying with gas masks on, you know, over the ocean, because they must have trouble breathing up there. I never thought he'd do it, you know. And then in the following December, he did some artwork. And then I just thought, well, he's answered my prayers. I love the sledge. I think it's the sledge that makes it for me. It's, it's putting it all into context with the boy standing there saying, isn't this wonderful? It's snowing, I'm gonna go out and play in the snow. And it's not until you go back 45 degrees that you realize that actually he's standing in pollution and muck. John Brandler, who owns a gallery outside London, purchased the piece from the owner of the garage. I was one of about four or five people that made offers on the piece, but I was the only one that said I'd keep it in Port Talbot. So I was able to buy it for a six-figure sum. I've got about a dozen Banksy's. This is the Banksy I am proud to own. Banksy originals have sold for over a million dollars, but Brandler isn't looking for a big check. You see, that's a beautiful building. He plans on using the mural to turn Port Talbot into an international street art destination, inviting tourists to come visit with the hopes of revitalizing its economy. Look at it, you know. All you can see behind me are blank walls. So why not get some good international artists? There's a huge wall behind me over there on the brown, grey brown building. Some of these buildings, the side of the motorway. Nobody's going to object. Brundler's plans are ambitious, but Port Talbot might not need help from a big city outsider to attract more artists. Gary has already lined some up for fun. I'm AIM72, graffiti artist. Amongst other things, I like traveling around the world painting walls. I received a message from um, Gary Owen, and he said, you know, we've got a bank here, we want one of yours, can you come and paint the walls? So I said, uh, well, yeah, why not? I wasn't sure what it was until the outline started going around it, you know? It looks good, though. I'm so pleased that this is what's happening, that an artist has already been there and done some work. It's a lot when you get in here and you see something like that. Where did you that come from? <laughs> when those thousand people a day or more come to Port Talbot, that's a lot of people coming into this town spending money. It's brilliant. And they wouldn't have come without the Banksy. <laughs>